All right, now here's an illustration. I just wrote down some pretty big numbers, not too big, 102.62.736 and 854.70. Okay, so the second number is 85,000. So if I did, if I did the, the raw algorithm, I'd have to do this at most 85,000 times. Now, I, I'm not willing to do 85,000 things by hand. I'm really not. But Maple does mod very quickly. So I just fed this in. And, and again, in Maple, the syntax, there's no percent. That's a C and C++ and other programming language syntax. In, in Maple, you just write the word mod. So I typed in 102-627-36 mod 85470 semicolon hit carriage return. Bam, out came 6336. So now my second problem, I take 85470 mod 6336 semicolon hit carriage term. Bam, out came 3102. I kept going until I get down to 132 mod 66. I hit carriage return and I get zero. Therefore, the answer to this is the 66. And it took me five lines. I could have done that arithmetic by hand, what, five minutes? Five, five minutes? No, it, wouldn't, it certainly would not have taken me an hour. Whereas the other method, I have to do 85,000 math problems. And by the way, since the answer turns out to be 66, you'd have to do 8,000, 85,400 and... 64. That's a lot of division. But I could have done this by hand in five minutes. Okay. Is this computation and is this algorithm clear? On every test that I have given in the past decade, students have always been asked to do one of these problems by hand. Expect no change you will not be given one quite this big. Maybe one in the hundreds or a thousand or something like that. But it will take three, four, five steps. But each step, but even with a hand calculation with no calculators, will take you a grand total of like one minute. Is this, is this clear? Or nobody's going to be surprised when test one comes in and there's such a problem. Question. Go back to that slide that says you got the N and the QM plus R. If you have any divisor of this side, it's also a divisor of this side. Take the greatest one. The greatest one divides this, it also divides that. Can't be any bigger. Because I take the original problem, the greatest common divisor of n and m, is exactly the same as the greatest common divisor of m and r. Exactly the same. No more, no less. It's exactly the same as this. It's exactly the same as that. It shifts over by one each time. So when I get down to the end, where I'm dividing this one by this one and getting remainder zero, that's the answer. If A equals B and B equals C and C equals D, et cetera, then it goes from the beginning to the end. Now, here is a beautiful problem that you can solve using this work. It's a, we're going to do a Diophantine equation. So what I've done is I've taken the work that I just did, but this time I've put in the quotients and the remainders. So when you do the first problem and you take the n and you divide it by 85,470, you get a quotient of 120 and a remainder of 6,336. 
Okay. Now, I, to be honest, I, I got Maple to help me with this, but I could have done this. Each one of those is a long division problem, and I could have done those in less than one minute each. Okay, so down the left-hand side, on the left column, you'll see the long division that got the remainders, but it also reports the quotients. Now, what I've done on the right-hand side is take all but the last one and rewrite them as the remainder in terms of the other two terms. Do you see what I've done to get the four expressions on the right? All right, so now what I'm going to do, and it won't fit on one slide, so you're going to have to trust me on this. I'm going to take the stuff which is on the right, and I'm going to go backtracking. So I'm going to write the first line as 66 equals 3102 minus 23 times 132, and I'm going to go backwards, working my way up. All right, let's do that together. So remember the number N is this 102 number, and the M is 85,470. And on the left-hand side, top left, I start with that line 66 is 3102 minus 23 times 132. Now, on the right-hand side, I have reminded myself of the expression for that remainder in terms of the other number. And you see, they're written upside downwards. So I've got 132 is... 6,336 minus 2 times 3,102. So I'm going to just substitute. So I take the top line, and where the 132 is, I replace it by what I had from the top right. And now I clean that up a little bit. Now I've got another expression, and I replace the 3,102. And I get the third line. Then I replace the 6,336, and I get the fourth line. So I have the 66 written as 634, a negative 634 times 102.62736 and 76,127 times 85,470. So what I've done is I have solved the Diophantine equation of how to write the greatest common divisor as an integer combination of n and m. And I did it just with a simple backtracking. You should expect that on test one, there will be two problems, or two halves of the same problem. In the first half, you will be asked to find the greatest common divisor by hand. In the second half, you'll be asked to unwind it to solve the Diophantine problem of writing the greatest common divisor in terms and in integer terms of your original values in n and m. Uh, the arithmetic will be much less tedious than this, but probably will take three lines or something like that. Check the test archive. There are bunches and bunches of sample problems like this. Work a couple of them and be sure that you know how to do these things. Any questions about the Euclidean algorithm? It, I, I hope that you can appreciate just how powerful this is, that Maple was able to take this problem that involved these integers that were like this, where the, the crude algorithm would, would be running forever. And it did it in less than a second. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Because, I mean, here's, here's the intuition. If I take a number that's this big and divide it by a number that's this big, where's the remainder? The remainder is smaller than this number. Now, I don't know where it is. It, it might be just a little bit smaller, but it might be a lot. A little bit of luck that's going on in here. 
Okay, so now I take this number and divide it by this number. Now, where's the remainder? Well, the remainder's in here. And it might be a lot smaller. So, you see, it's how, what's happening to that remainder? And if you're, if you're cutting down, I don't know, say, say by half, kind of lucky, well, you'll get there in a hurry. You know, 100 digits, 50 digits, 25 digits, 12 digits, 6 digits, 3 done. That, that wasn't so bad, 100 digits. So that's, that's the kind of thinking that you need to be growing used to doing. 